What's up? Welcome in. I am so excited to chat in this video with you guys about things that I regret decluttering. And I have a lot to say <laughs> in this video. So this is just gonna be chatting about makeup, grab some coffee or tea, water, whatever. Let's just chat about makeup. I was inspired to do this video by Miss Kelly Gooch, who I love. So definitely check out her channel and I'll link her video like this that inspired me to do this. There were a couple of things that when I thought about all of the decluttering I've done over the years that stood out in my mind that I'm like, man, I wish I still had that. And the things that really stood out in my mind were typically things that have been discontinued. So things that I can't get my hands on anymore anyway. And I'm like, dang, that really was good. Like, I wish I still had it. Now I can't get it. But I also have a group of products that are still available that I could buy today that I regret getting rid of. And so we'll talk about like whether I would consider rebuying it in the future or not and why and all that. Anyway, so the way that I went about figuring out beyond the ones that were just already in my mind, figuring out what I've decluttered in the past and what I regret was I went back through, oh my gosh, you guys, my old declutter videos like 2014, 2015, 2016 and I didn't like sit and watch. I mean there's so y'all if you've looked at my decluttering playlist they're in order from like most recent to oldest and so I was kind of just clicking through and I'd fast forward and scrub forward and then I'd freeze frame on like when I would show my entire set of concealers or entire set of palettes and just kind of look through and see like okay what did I have that I know I got rid of are any of these things here standing out as something like, man, I wish I still had that. I'm way over explaining this video, but whatever, we're just talking. So the thing that struck me the most was that if you go back like four or five years, I feel like 75% of the things that I was showing in those videos don't exist anymore. Like even things I kept, you know, for a while longer, they just don't exist. So what that tells me is that Man, like we know obviously brands pump out new products all the time and stuff. And that of course things get discontinued, revamped, repackaged, reformulated. But I don't think I had really realized the extent of how many products from any given brand is just like, like the entire brand five years later, like it's a totally different set of products. Like so many things change, get discontinued. So it's almost rarer, more rare, to find products that have existed for decades and still exist, like that is very rare. So that was just kind of an interesting takeaway. And another thing I was giggling about was <laughs> some of my oldest, oldest videos I was filming like on my phone. And it's crazy because I'll film on my phone today, even for some parts of vlogs. And the quality of course is like usually pretty decent depending on the situation and the lighting, but like our phones can, film amazing quality, you know what I mean? But back in like 2013 and 14, I was filming on my phone and I would be like way up close, like I'd be going through, you know, makeup and I'd have the camera freaking right here. Like all you're seeing is like one mascara, like this big in the front. And it just made me laugh. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> that's all. It was just really weird to watch and it's so blurry and shaky and way too zoomed in. And I'm like, how did any of you guys, any of you guys that have been around that long, how did you watch it? But then I'm also thinking like, well, I watched other YouTubers during that time and I'm, we were all doing the same thing. Like, it's just funny. So it was just like a fun trip down memory lane. The other thing, another caveat, I guess here before I chat about this stuff is obviously I declutter all the time. If you aren't new here, you know that I try makeup, things come in, things come out. I buy a lot. Some isn't set in PR and that's just the reality of what I do. I feel like I don't have to explain that as much nowadays, but like five or six years ago, you really did because people were like, why do you have such a big, you know, cause it was, it's just different. Like anyway, so what was I trying to say there? I don't know. <laughs> oh, that these regrets, it's, none of it's that deep. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. All right. I don't think any of you guys are going to take any of this too seriously. So let's talk about things that have been discontinued that I wish I still had. And then we're going to go into the things that still exist and whether or not I would buy them again, but that I do regret buying. So discontinued products. The very first one that I was like, absolutely a freaking wish I still had this is the original Naked palette from Urban Decay. Oh, and I feel like I knew at the time I got rid of it that I would regret it, you know what I mean? And the reality is if I still had it today, it'd probably be a little old, like maybe I wouldn't wanna use the shadows, but then shadows last, you know, a decent amount of time, you know? But even just for nostalgia's sake, just to be able to open it and look at it and be like, man, like this is just like the height of popular palettes. Like that was it, that, that was it, man. Like when I think of, Holy grail, like most popular cult favorite palettes over the years, that is the first one I will always think of. So I wish I still had it. And it's funny because back when I owned it, well, I certainly did my makeup differently, 
but I, I feel like I would almost utilize a lot more of that now, even though I don't do crazy eye looks, but I would utilize a lot more of it now and utilize it differently than I did way back then. So it's just, it's one of those things. I have this sneaking suspicion that Urban Decay is gonna come back in like a year or two and be like, naked palettes back, baby. And we are all gonna go crazy and we're all gonna buy it and we're gonna love it. <laughs> I really hope they do. Because <laughs> think about it, you know the sales had to have been like dwindling because once you own it, you own it. Like you don't, you might go through some of it. I remember my oldest sister, I'm pretty sure she went through like most of the shades, like fully used them up and got another one like that. So you, people use it up, but generally you'd buy the palette and you probably wouldn't buy it again. So I wonder if sales are dwindling cause everyone already owned it. And then it was kind of a smart move. I really hope you bring it back Urban Decay, I'm just saying. But I want it exactly as it was. I want the like furry palette, like that, you know, the velvet feel, like I don't want anything changed. Okay, this. I did not realize how many Benefit boxed blushes I owned. Now, I, my favorite, even still today, is the Benefit Dallas. I have it, this is the second one I've had. It's just a bronzy blush. It's kind of like the bronzer before there was the bronzer. Like, this is basically it. Anyway, but I did not realize I own like all of them. Hervana, Coralista, Sugar Bomb. Now they have other ones, but I feel like the old ones are better. <laughs> or maybe they were like more like shades I would wear today. I don't know. Point is, they're not being sold. Hervana and Coralista are the two that I wish I still had. Hervana, I remember being a really light pink. There was no, I don't remember there being shimmer in it, but it was a nice light matte pink. And for my skin tone, it was actually really good and I really miss it. And then Coralista was just one of those classic, you know, shimmery coral blushes, a la the NARS orgasm blush, those kinds. Man, they always had a really nice smell. Like, again, I wish Benefit would bring back those old school. I mean, they're still the same, but like those particular ones, I would snatch those up. I wish I had kept them. I saw it in one of my declutter videos from years and years ago, how many of them I had. And I'm like, why did I get rid of them? <laughs> like, it just kills me. I think about those a weird amount. <laughs> the original OG color tattoos. So color tattoos still exist. So this one could kind of go in either category. And I own some of the color tattoos that are currently available from Maybelline. A, I think the original formula is better. Like I can't think of the word to describe. The original ones were thicker and I don't mean the formula. It's like the color and maybe a little bit of the formula was just a little bit thicker. So man, like they packed a punch and they were beautiful. You could still blend them, but they did not budge. The ones now I do still think are really good, but they're, the colors are not quite as punchy. And on top of that, I just feel like they're, it's just not the exact same formula. I do know that for sure. It can't be the same formula. So like the bad to the bronze that used to exist and man, those were so good. And I remember it was a big deal because those were kind of like a dupe for the Mac paint pots. And that really just didn't exist where there was actually a decent cream shadow in the drugstore. You know what I mean? And so those were the days, man. <laughs> so another one, Revlon lip butters. So here's the thing. Revlon has released their like super lustrous shine line. Very, very similar but I want that packaging from the Revlon lip butters. Like those things, again, if Revlon were smart, Revlon, are you listening? If you were smart, you'd relaunch those. We would all lose our collective minds. Revlon lip butters were the thing from the drugstore to buy. Like I remember I was nannying for a family, like when they were, were becoming popular. And I remember like saving up to buy like a new shade every week, like thinking, okay, out of the, my paycheck this week, I'm gonna go and buy one shade, like which shade do I want? And I was just collecting them slowly. And Peach Parfait, that shade was like one of my favorites. It was peachy, but it had like glitter in it, which nowadays I'm like, would I like it? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> but man, they were so good. And I love like the quilted packaging and all that. It was just one of those things. So I regret not at least keeping one. Again, I wouldn't use it cause it'd be way too old, but I regret not having having at least one to like look at, show you right now. Just remember the good old days. <laughs> Thank goodness for the internet. Like I can find pictures of all of these things with no problem. On that same vein, the Maybelline Color Whispers. I ended up, I think in the end, liking those. There was one shade called Lust for Blush. The fact that I can remember the shade names, wow. But Maybelline Color Whisper in the shade Lust for Blush was like my favorite rosy pink lip color. Similar where it was like a moisturizing, slightly sheer-ish lipstick but these didn't have glitter, whereas a lot of the lip butters did. So they were different, both so good. I loved both of those lines so much. So again, all of these brands have similar lines out there. So it's not as though these don't really still exist in some form, 
but I don't, I have not found the Lust for Blush shade. So if you know that it exists in their new line, let me know. All right, so now let's talk about some products that still exist out there. You can just buy at the store, you know, but I decluttered and I kind of regret it. <laughs> so the Too Faced Peach Palette. This is one that I loved the smell of this. Like some people liked it, some people didn't. I like peachy smells. I loved it. And there was something about the colors in this, like this was my first foray into liking pinkier shadows because I really did not wear, there's a long time where I just didn't wear warm tones at all. Like when it was really, po really, really popular, I was like, I don't like them. And then I slowly grew into liking them. But this was one of my stepping stones into more like pinky tones. And I loved it because the shimmers, the Too Faced Shimmer Shadow formula in those palettes are so, so good to me. Like they're just the right thickness and pigmentation. They stay like they're, I love the sheen of them. And that is one that I really might buy again. <laughs> I have pulled up the like page on is it Sephora, Ulta, wherever, and like looked at it and looked at the shades and thought to myself like, okay, 2022 Jesse, would you use this palette? You know, like I know what I like. I tend to do really simple eye looks if I wear eyeshadow at all, but there's still a large part of me that's like, yes, Jessica, you would use that. <laughs> so let me know. Do you still have the Sweet Peach palette? Do you love it? Should I get it again? <laughs> Let's see. Okay, this is a very specific one. So this is the Kaja Mochi Glow Highlighter. I typed height lighter here. The reason I regret getting rid of this, I got rid of it during a time that I was starting to like cream and liquid highlights and blushes and stuff, but not at the level that I like them now. And so I really regret not keeping it because me today would love that highlighter. It reminds me of like the Hourglass Vanish Stick Highlighter where you can just get a little bit on, tap it, you hardly need to blend it, like it's just so easy to use. And I remember the Mochi Glow being like that, but because I wasn't used to using highlighter in that way, I just didn't really get it, you know what I mean? And so I regret getting rid of that one. I don't know that I'd buy it again only because I now do have plenty of highlighters and it's still $21. These are all out of stock. Now I'm starting to wonder, maybe it's discontinued. I'm just on Sephora's site, but anyway. So that's one that I don't know that I would buy again, but it was really good. The Pixi Highlighter Duo in Delicate Dew was so pretty. And where did, I feel like I just saw someone using it in a video recently and I was like, I totally forgot about that. And I was like, where is that? And then I was like, I got rid of it. It definitely can can lean icy if you're not really careful, unless that's what you want, you know, but it would always catch the light so beautifully. It was such a finely milled highlighter that it just always looked really pretty on the skin, even if you had texture or fine lines like where you're putting it. I really liked that. I think the reason I ended up getting rid of it was because I knew that there were two shades in there and I always went for the lighter one. So this deeper one, which is hardly deeper, I didn't reach for so I'm like, well, I'm only using half of it, so I'll just get rid of it. But that half was really good. <laughs> and I feel like the darker one, which again was hardly darker, I feel like that one I could have used more as like a blush topper, which is honestly, I end up applying highlighter to like my whole cheek anyway. Like <laughs> I just apply it with reckless abandon. So that one I might consider buying again because I really did like it. Okay, the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette Volume 1. You can still get this. Now they have different shades, finally. I think I regret just not having the original one still. And again, back when I was using this, I was only using like one of the shades. Nowadays, I just take it and freaking like rub my brush through all of it and just use it. But I wasn't as into glowy skin then. I feel like I liked more matte skin. So I would use it as like a highlighter, but like honestly, the was it the far left powder in that was good for like all over and it would be a slight shimmer, but it'd just be really pretty. I didn't use it in that way because I'm like, well, I don't want glitter, you know, shimmer everywhere. But it looked really pretty. And every time I've seen someone use it, I'm like, dang. So that's one that, again, price tag wise, I'm like, I don't know that I would buy it again, but maybe. Like if it were like 50% off at like, I don't think, does Ulta sell Hourglass? I was gonna say, if they had it like a, you know, one of their 21 days of beauty sales and it was 50% off, I really might consider it, but I wish I just still had it. Okay, this one I typed in and almost didn't mention because I don't actually know why I got rid of it. Then it was late at night and I didn't want to keep watching the video to find out. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm like, we're literally having this baby in a few days. When I'm tired, I don't fight it. So I, I didn't end up finishing the video. But it was the Kogan Doe Aqua Foundation. I love that foundation. I think the reason I got rid of it was because the shade wasn't right, but I don't think that's true either because I feel like my shade was, like it was good. It is such a beautiful hydrating foundation, but it still had coverage. I hear about it all the time on YouTube. So that is one that I probably will repurchase. I'm just right now like 
we are at the height of like so many foundations launching. I'm like, I, <laughs> I have so many that I'm planning on trying even during maternity leave. And I might like pop up on Instagram and stuff and talk about them, but there's so many I'm trying that I'm like, that one's on the back burner, but I, I would repurchase that again in the future because it was beautiful. The Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Concealer. Stay with me because some of you guys are like, Jessica, what? Because I've talked about how I really wasn't impressed by that concealer and I've done all kinds of, well, okay, a couple of Charlotte Tilbury like full brand videos and I've talked about how I really wasn't impressed with it, but it was so long ago that I tried it and I got rid of it and I kind of want to try it again and I do know for sure that whatever the shade was that I had was not the right shade for me. It was too light and that instantly, like with the concealer, if it's way, way, way too light, I won't like it. Like it, it's very hard for me to see past that. So I think if I got a slightly darker shade, I might, might like it more. But again, price tag wise, I'm like, do I really want to risk it for the biscuit, baby? I don't know that I do. So that's kind of a maybe repurchase in the future. We'll see. If you know what shade I would be, let me know. Cause I think I got like shade number one and it was, it was too light. I like it to be, of course I'm saying this and I feel like my under eyes are like brighter than they normally are today. I used by the way, the NYX, I'm still loving it, man. The NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum mm. in the shade light. And plus I've tried a couple of concealers that I'm almost positive are dupes for that concealer from what I remember. And it's hard though to know, you know, 115% for certain because I don't have it with me, you know what I mean? So we'll see. This one I added on at the end, the Too Faced Chocolate Bronzer. These still exist and they have their different shades. There's like the milk chocolate, the original chocolate, and then like a darker, deeper one. I don't know what they called it though. I feel like the first time I tried it, I A, wasn't using decent brushes. And I, I say this for a reason. So when I originally tried the Too Faced medium shade, the chocolate bronzer that was like all they launched. It was just a little bit too deep for me and I wasn't really great at applying bronzer. Not that I'm that much better now, <laughs> but I'm just saying. So when they eventually launched the milk chocolate, I was like, perfect. I have fair skin that's gonna be much better for me. And I remember trying it being like, Ooh, like it doesn't show up as much, but I feel like if I had like denser brushes I was using it with to kind of blend it on, I would have loved it. So that one actually is kind of high because I loved the smell of those. I remember the bronzer itself being good. Now I can appreciate a lighter bronzer and how to apply it. Whereas back then I feel like I would just apply a little bit and be like, oh, I can't see it and just move on. But if I used a different brush, I would have been able to see it. And it probably still would have looked a lot better than the original medium shade they launched. So that's everything. <laughs> this was so much fun. I'm sure the second this video ends, I'm gonna think of like, 15 more things. Maybe there will be a part two in the future of more products I regret decluttering, but just kind of fun to talk about A, products gone by that don't exist, but B, just talking about products that I realized after the fact, like, dang, I wish I would have kept it, you know? So let me know, are there any products that you have gotten rid of in the past that you so totally regret getting rid of? I'd love to read about it down in the comments. Most likely by the time you are seeing this video, I will have had my baby. So that is very exciting. We'll see, well, if, if you go to my channel and see that I've uploaded the video, if you're seeing this, I'm in labor, or whatever I'm gonna call it, that means I have. <laughs> if it's not up, that means I have not, so ooh. But I will be posting even more updates over on my Instagram, undoubtedly, which is at It's Jessica Braun. So if you wanna see more like live feed of what's going on, definitely check it out over there. And I'd also love to uh, have you check out my TikTok, which is also at It's Jessica Braun. But uh, I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you, Kelly Gooch. Again, I'll link her original video and her channel below. Thank you for the inspiration. You inspire me a lot, actually, with a lot of your videos. So uh, that is all. I will see you guys later. I don't wanna hang up the phone, clearly. Bye. <laughs>